Hello everyone and welcome back to Lexide and uh, I wonder why I'm holding these two Acura Scale locomotives in my hand the Deltic and the Class 92 let's go and find out why right welcome back so this video is really about those two locomotives now as you know hopefully you know um, especially from my last video I was a little bit <laughs> fed up with the two Acura scale locomotives I bought first of all the Delta which I bought um, I had to send back to them because it wasn't riding right and it was speeding up and slowing down speeding up and slowing down um, and also the loudspeaker was loose as well so it's vibrating against the roof which is a common problem um, <clears throat> so I sent it back and it came back and they had cured the slowing down and speeding up but it just wasn't running correctly it was um, almost as if it was on half power somebody suggested that have a check that it's on shunting mode no, it wasn't on shunting mode. Um, other people suggested <laughs> lots of things, really. Um, my main concern was, was it my layout? Um, because did I have a voltage drop? But then I was going through all this stuff in my head about, was it me? Was it my controller? Was it my layout? But, but the thing is that I have absolutely no problems with any other locomotive on the, on the layout, nothing. They all run perfectly fine. So why should it be anything to do with the layout? Well it isn't, it's, it's nothing to do with the layout. So anyway, <coughs> after my video the other day, now this is going to be a, a bit of a long drawn out process this video so please bear with me because it will help you in the end hopefully if you have any issues uh, with your locomotives. Um, Susanna from um, her channel, Susanna Jacqueline, she messaged me and said that she was, she could see that I was concerned about these two locomotives and she had a word with the guy in her model shop and very kindly of her she wrote me a message to say that he thought that it could be something to do with the back emf on the decoder settings so i said okay i'm up for that i'm game i will look into it which i did now i know nothing about back emf or the settings for bmf at the emf um, until I did some research and I keep saying this you know it doesn't matter what you're doing it, just research everything first because it really does help um, I, I researched the castle and typical castles and surroundings and so forth before I even attempted any of that and um, I actually quite enjoy researching um, and so I did this with this back EMF on lock sound version 5 decoders. I started reading it and it was going straight over my head. I was thinking, what? <laughs> but the more I read, the more I kind of got into it and started to understand it. And the nearest I can get to it is that when we get our locomotives, <coughs> normally you take them out of the box, you put them on the track, you set them off and they're fine. And there's no adjustments needed. It, I mean a typical example was my class 47 from Backman. I haven't touched that in any way or form um, and it just ran perfectly straight out of the box. No different settings involved or anything. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's really how it should be. Um, when you buy a car you don't take it home to the garage and start tweaking it because it's not running right it just normally runs right and the same with 
locomotives. You don't expect to have to take them out of the box and do a whole load of adjustments, especially on something like back EMF. Um, now back EMF, very briefly, it gives the locomotive signals to do certain things and it's especially for um, under load. So if a, a locomotive is going up an incline, it takes into account that incline and doesn't slow down. <clears throat> if you don't have back EMF for, on, it will start going up the incline and then it will gradually slow down because it's going up an incline and maybe it's got like a rake of six or seven coaches behind it, which doesn't help. The back EMF compensates for all that. So there are five, I think it is, five different settings. <clears throat> Um, and I will post a, 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 a screenshot of the web page I looked at of the five settings which need to be tweaked. Now there is the first of all the famous lock sound cheat where you get hold of or you dial in CV54, put it on zero, press function zero and it shoots off for about two seconds doing its own thing and that should kind of calibrate the motor to the decoder and the locomotive. Um, so that's the first thing you do. So you set a datum and thereafter if that doesn't sort it all out you then have to go into these five separate CV settings and adjust them accordingly and on this screenshot which I've showed it shows what somebody has done to make a base setting for those CVs. It's then up to you to start tweaking those base settings so that you get the locomotive running sweetly to the best of your ability if you like. Now <clears throat> I chose to do the Deltic first because that was what I thought would be the easiest one to do because it ran okay it just wasn't running top speed so I went into the first CV setting which gives you your initial top speed which I think is CV5 I think I might be wrong on that but I think it's CV5 and that gives you um, parameters up to dialing 255 for maximum speed. You've then got CV4 and CV3 and CV6 uh, and they all intermingle as regards acceleration, deacceleration, crawl etc. Um, <clears throat> so I set that at 255 anyway <clears throat> uh, on the top speed. Now to try and get your head around this the best thing I can try and describe it as that if you go into your CVs, your initial CVs of uh, 3, 4, 5 and possibly 6, um, they are your settings. They're not the settings for the loco as such, they are your settings. The EMF, the back EMF settings, are the ones for the locomotive. So it's like the equivalent of, again, I will draw a comparison to a car. Um, <clears throat> if you set the carburation and the timing correctly to the car, that's the equivalent, if you like, of the back EMF. Your personalised settings, which are CVs 3, 4, 5 and 6, that's like you've got the full speed of the car dialed in but you don't want it to go as fast as that you want to put if you like a hold on it a brake so that it's not actually going as fast as it possibly can so you adjust the carburetor to the throttle settings so if you like it doesn't matter how hard you put your foot on the throttle the butterfly valves of the carburetor aren't opening as full as what they can because you set it so that it goes up to a maximum and then that's it, it hits a stop and the butterfly valve won't open any further even though your foot is
push straight on the floor. <clears throat> so having taken all that into account, it's then a case of going back to these back EMF settings and adjusting them gradually from the base numbers. Now, I was starting this yesterday for both locos at two o'clock in the afternoon and I finished at about seven o'clock, eight o'clock, um, taking about an hour out for dinner. So I spent a long, long time doing these adjustments, but bugger, was it worth it? Both those locos now <coughs> run sweet as a nut, so I didn't have to send them back. It was me purely doing a case of finally adjusting these back EMF numbers. And if you do it live <coughs> on the rolling road, you can actually physically see and hear the difference you're making. There comes a time when you overdo it and the loco will start juddering. So you then back off on whatever number you're on. You start backing off until it runs smoothly and quieter. And you can physically see and hear the difference you're making. So I don't have to send these two locomotives back to a curious scale. I've managed to sort it out, they're sitting here and I will show you them running on the track shortly and I can't believe that I've actually managed to sort this problem out because I thought it was a, a no-go. I thought, oh, you know what, I'm just, I can't be bothered anymore. I will eventually send them back and ask for a refund <clears throat> because at that point I was just thinking to myself, well it's a, a, a motor which has gone wrong um, because obviously a Curoscale said to me they had replaced the motor on the Deltic um, which they may well have done um, I don't know but what they didn't do was then to go and check the back EMF to make it run correctly now the thing which worries me about a Curoscale is that Although their models are incredibly detailed, they're fabulous models to look at, I'm, I've found that their electronics are not up to par. Now, I don't know what's going on because other folk who have bought these two locomotives haven't had any issues. They apparently put them on the track and they run perfectly. So how come that I and a few other people I know have had issues with motors? Now I'm seriously thinking that it's actually nothing to do with the motor itself um, because if it was then how come I've managed to correct both of them with no additional aids with regard to replacement motor apart from the Deltic which even with the replacement motor wasn't running correctly. If we go back to the class 47 from Backman how come I just took that out of the box and it managed to run it? Absolutely fine. No problems at all, no adjustments necessary. Obviously all the settings were correctly done at the factory prior to it being shipped out. <clears throat> the thing about back EMF, go back onto this back EMF thing, they're all different for each individual locomotive because the tolerance between every motor is different. So you could have a half a dozen class 92s all with different settings for the back EMFs. And what should happen is that when you do the CV54 trick, that should automatically sort all that out. So I assume from the factory that they do this and it sorts it all out. 
there must be on a few occasions like mine where they if they did do that it didn't make any difference or it put in the wrong figures I don't know I'm not skilled enough to know what they did what they didn't do what happens to their manufacturing side of it I don't know but there's been a few issues with Curascal and their electronics as I said now for me personally I had the vibrating loudspeaker um, which is a mechanical thing really not an electrical thing and that was because there's two screws on one of the bracket which weren't even actually in there <clears throat> the bracket was there but it was just loose so it allowed the uh, loudspeaker to vibrate up and down and hit the roof that was a common occurrence because um, I've read so many people who have had the self same problem with the Acura scale Delta and there's been a few people reporting issues with motor issues which I'm now firmly believing that it's not actually a problem with because of my experience not actually a problem with the motor itself it's just something to do with the decoder settings not the fact that there's a, a fault with the decoder but it's the settings within the decoder which are wrong why these are wrong I haven't got a clue don't know so kind of long story short now as I'm waffling I've tried my best here to explain that if people have got issues with their Acura scale locos then it seems apparently that it can be cured at home rather than sending it back if you do a bit of research and you check the back EMF settings <clears throat> it might not be a case that it's a faulty motor or that it's a faulty decoder it's just settings which apparently can cure the issues like I've done here I'm quite proud of the fact that <laughs> being a numpty on electrics on railways on a lot of things that I've actually managed to sit down and do a bit of research and come up with a solution that has cured my two locomotives um, because I knew up until yesterday I knew nothing about that absolutely zero um, I, I've heard of back EMF and I kind of understood what it was about but never really delved into it until yesterday and it was an eye-opener to actually physically see this both of these locomotives gradually gradually getting rid of their faults so um, this is all thanks to Susanna. Susanna, if you're watching, thank you so much. Um, this has really helped me out because I was getting quite disheartened with the Curascale. I had twice now um, cancelled my pre-orders for the next Deltic uh, coming out next year. Um, but I won't now because even if it comes and it arrives and it behaves incorrectly I now know at least what to try first before sending it back but let's hope that doesn't occur let's hope I can take this locomotive out of the box and it runs fine and I hope that all you people who have all another 37 which I haven't um, have the same result too that you just take it out of the box put it on the track and it runs just like my 47 did yesterday so i'll put these on the track and uh i'll show you what how they perform they are totally different to what they used to perform like okay so i'll catch you in a minute bye for now bye hello again Okay, so we'll start off with the Biltic, um, and uh, she's pulling a rake of Pullmans. So let's see how it performs now on the layout, and give it a go. I won't put the sound on, just so that you can hear <clears throat> what's happening to the motor. So 
to a nice smooth start. That's now about half speed. Just under. So we'll follow it around, do one lap of the track and then we'll just increase the speed of it. Right, we'll just put the speed up a bit. That's just under three quarters, about two thirds speed. That's already faster, much faster than what it was when it came back from a tour scale. At full speed, when I got it back, it was doing about 50%. So let's see what it's like on full speed. There you go, quite a difference. Quite a difference. And it's smooth. There's no juddering, no speeding up and slowing down. It's just a constant speed, which is how it should be. Okay, so let's bring that into the station now. There we go. So let's try the <coughs> class 92. This is the one which shows the most difference. This is unbelievably different to how it was before I started doing the back EMF. Smooth as silk, responsive, quiet. Most of that noise is from this rolling stock, but the motor is very quiet. So this really proves that it's nothing to do with my layout, nothing to do with being on chunking mode, nothing to do with being an issue with the motor. Right, let's speed it up a bit. That is on about a third speed. And that's plenty fast enough. I 
will put it a bit higher and just a bit cautious of the stock. There you go. Not bad, eh? I, I'm just over the moon. I really am over the moon in the fact that I've managed to cure this. It took a long time. It did take a long time, I have to admit. So from two o'clock till about seven, eight o'clock with a, an hour out for dinner. But it was worth it because you know, I've got two very usable and really nice locomotives back on the layout again um, without having to send them back to a cura scale. I did also fix the speaker in here. Let me put the sound on. Bear with me. So there we go, I just thought I would show this because it kind of now confirms everything about what's been happening with these two locomotives. Um, it was not to do with um, 40 motors, although they said, Curious said, that they changed the motor in here. But they didn't actually then go and look at the performance of it because it was running at about 50% when it came back and they didn't fix the vibrating loudspeaker. Uh, and he is a completely different animal. There was nothing wrong with it as such. It just needed adjusting. So I don't know what's going on. I really don't. Um, that's up to Akira Scale to look into it and um, see what the issues are but there's something something not quite right regarding the locomotives when they're coming out of the factory because why should I have to do this I shouldn't I shouldn't have to do this okay people um, I've taken up enough of your time I just want you to show you the way the, the way those two locomotives are performing now um, big big thank you to Susanna for um, looking into that for me. She took the time and trouble to ask the chap in the model shop and then convey his recommendations back to me. And uh, for that I'm really, really grateful. So thank you, Susanna. Right. Oh, talking about Susanna. If you don't know her, go over to Susanna Joklin. I'll put a link in the description and check her channel out. Okay? So... Bye for now and thank you very much for watching. Bye.